Let's jump into Smart and first ask the question, what is a target trace for? When you're tuning a system and designing it beforehand, you're wanting to deliver the full spectrum to your audience. So all the way down from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz, every frequency matters. So we need to make sure we have speakers in the right places and the right subsystems. That means subs, fills, mains, whatever to deliver that. So what is user adjustable and variable in the field, apart from being able to deliver the full spectrum, and what is the overall tonality of that system? Is it dark? Is it bright? Do I need to account for room acoustics? All these play into the more subjective part of our craft as system engineers or A1s who are responsible for the system. Given that, we get to use EQ combined with the natural response of the speakers to tilt the spectrum of our system. So here is the target trace that I like to use or desired tonality in the audience for the systems that I tune. This is, of course, adjustable after the fact, but this is my starting point. So I want to make sure that there is this low and rise that slopes down and gets back to zero at about 300 hertz and this slow and gentle fall off all the way to 16K and then a roll off right there. I got this target curve from Michael Lawrence. He's giving me permission to share it and you can get that in my audio toolkit at the link below. And All it's doing is serving as a guide for me. So when I place a microphone out in the audience anywhere, after I'm done tuning it, I should be able to get close to this response. So here's what that would look like. So here's three traces from a system I recently tuned. Not the prettiest data in the world since it was a super reverberant space, but I can say, hey, all of these are very close to this target curve. So if I had something that deviated from it a lot, I can use EQ to adjust it to this target trace and i'll try to use target trace not target curve because target curve is actually a smart term for using something in spectrum view which we're not covering today but to show you the pre-tuning so this is mains left before i added anything there is there was a difference in the top end and there's the low mid rise was not quite where i wanted it to be so i had to use eq in the top end on individual zones to get everything to match and then i used an overall eq uh, i applied a high pass filter as you can see that the the lows are acting a little bit differently down here but anyway so this one again didn't need a ton of eq to get to that curve but i wanted to bend the response in every seat so it's a good idea to take measurements in multiple parts of your audience so you can know if the system is translating with this desired tonality to every seat. So if I bring these back, I can see that EQ has made it to where they overlap more and the, the, the tuning has done a good job of this. Again, it always starts with the design first, but we in the field have these further tools to help get there. So what does this actually look like in practice? We're gonna run a little simulation here in the studio. Got my little five inch Fostex speaker here that you've probably seen before. Got a measurement microphone about a foot in front of it and let's run a measurement on it and see what we come up with and then hop into the processor and apply some EQ to get to this curve. So this is the Fostex pre-EQ, and this is the trace before. So I want to be able to add or use some EQ to change its response to get to the curve. I don't have a sub in the studio or else I'd have that as well for you. So sorry, I don't have it. But if we were just focusing on mains, this is what I'd be thinking about. All that being said, its natural response is following this pretty closely until it starts to bottom out here at about 100 hertz and dives down. But what we do need to adjust is the top end. So I run the pink a little bit, capture the measurement, think like, okay, hmm, what do we need to change? And I think a high shelf will probably be the best filter here. And then I need to use a low pass to get rid of some of this, this super zippy stuff up top. So let's do the high shelf first. Pop over to my processor, which is the DSP-408 from Tommen. And I'm going to bring it down about 3 dB and see if that's the right decision. So here's at 4K, a pretty wide Q of 0.71. Let's do it 3 dB. I have that in place and this is the response that it has. Let me turn on the generator again. So this is just the high shelf and it's done a good job of getting our tonality just down a little bit, which is good, following the target curve. So again, just a gentle softening of the highs. In a live environment, for whatever reason, most folks prefer this really full low end that has a lot of impact, and so things can be loud, 
uh, and very visceral, but the, the top end doesn't rip your head off. So this is me diving that down. I'm not needing to adjust much here in the mids or low mids. It's following this curve. And now lastly, I'm gonna add that low pass filter. Nothing too aggressive here. I'm gonna do a fourth order Butterworth. Put that here at 17.5K. It's now in the signal path, turn on the generator. And we see that dive down. Abbreviate there, Fostex, high shelf plus low pass filter, and now we got there. So in two steps, we've now changed the response of the speaker to fit the target curve at this mic position. Again, over there, so we're full PA. I'd be either have multiple microphones out and looking at all the responses and making the best judgment to make the best response across the whole audience or if I had one microphone be probably placing at the front row the middle of the audience and the back row for its specific zone that I'm trying to EQ and making EQ adjustments there I could also go after this little bit of a 621 bump if I want and get super granular but overall just in two moves I've gotten very close and the speaker was already close to its response out the box all right, so to recap, a target trace gives us a tonal north star, if you will, to shoot for. And so I want in every seat possible for my system to be able to deliver this frequency response. And the design's gonna dictate that, but I could further use tools like EQ to make sure we're getting that in the field. My name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to use the link below to grab that target trace and put it to work for you in the field. Catch you next time.